What's going on my dummies and welcome back to another Digimon deck tech. In today's episode we're doing the one deck that I really don't want to do but I know you guys are going to enjoy it. In today's episode we are doing Omnimon. Alright, for starters, Gigimon does not exist uh, for set 1.0, uh, not 1.1. Um, I'm playing a 4 of of Koromon. I find that to be a lot easier because the baby demon only gives uh, plus 2k if you have pierce. And my deck does not give pierce at all. Or the Yokomon that whenever you attack. If you wanted to, I would say play one of Yokomon. But I like the 4 of of Koromon because at least his ability will do something eventually. But when set 1.5 comes out, we do replace the Koromons with Gigimon. And I think Koromon would be a one of, if I'm not mistaken. I could be wrong. Uh, moving on. This is going to be a really quick deck tech, I feel like. <coughs> Excuse me. The first rookie that we have is our only one with an actual ability. It's an inheritable ability. as Agumon from the starter deck. Zero to evolve, three cast to play, or three cost to play. Uh, 2,000 DP. Now, I know a lot of people play Gilmon here. I don't mind Gilmon, right? However, I've come to notice a lot of times in games that things that kill Agumon are the same things that kill Gilmon, including security checks. So, like, I kind of like the Gilmon, but that is my personal opinion. They're interchangeable. If you like the Gilmon, play the Gilmon. By all means, play the Gilmon. I'm not saying don't. I just like the Agumon better because it is a flat 1,000. You don't need any statistics, nothing like that. Um, the Gilmon is still playable. I'm not going to give any kind of like any bad bad reputation for him. He is still a very good card to put here. Um, the other two rookies are 3,000 power, two cost to play, zero to evolve, level threes, just generic free costs. Um, the from what I could tell from Omnimon and playing it, you want to starve your opponent of resource and try to get to that Omnimon as quick as possible. So playing as many generic cards as we can actually fuels that fire for us. Uh, next up we have Greymon. Greymon's inheritable ability. This is the Greymon from the starter deck. It is security attack plus one. This is really good for um, the Greymon play or the War Greymon play or... For the Metal Greymon play, when I get to him, the Metal Greymon's really good. I enjoy the Metal Greymon. I've won so many games because of him. Just him alone, not even the War Greymon or the Omnimon. But um, Security Attack plus one. So whenever you get to your ultimate level Digimon, you're able to swing for two damage. Get that in, get it out. Uh, pretty good. Next, we have Dark Tyranomon. Dark Tyranomon is our generic one to evolve, 6,000 DP. Dark Tyranomon's really good. Um, it can starve our opponent and can also allow us to get to our ultimate level Digimon without using too much memory to go over. So, for example, we could go 0 to we cost Agumon into Dark Tyranomon on turn 1, giving our opponent 1 memory, and they have to play something to force it over to us. And it feels bad whenever they have to play a level, like a 3 cost rookie or something. Like, the Dark Tyranno is really good at starving. Uh, final champion here is uh, Corridormon. Corridormon is basically our blocker. Uh, generic. Um, nothing else really needs to be said here. Next up, we have Groundramon. Um, Groundramon is our vanilla. Uh, level 5. 2 to evolve. Again, starving as much as we can for to our opponent. 6,000 DP. Uh, which isn't bad. Like It does trade with a lot of the other level 6s at least. Um, so that is a positive whenever it gets to security checks. This is my personal tech. Um, other people might play a four of, of, uh, Metal Growl or War Growlmon. Some people might play the Metal Greymon that has one block plus three memory. I like this Metal Greymon. And this is the alternate art, um... That's why it looks so funny. I just like the alternate art. It's a good homage to the original card game. I like him because he's 9,000 power first off. The 9,000 power allow, at least allows him to trade with every level 5 whenever he's checked off security. Um, the same reason I really, really enjoy him is his plus 3,000 on my turn. That allows my mega level Digimon, my level 6s, to actually swing in 
and not die to Omnimons in the security checks, which is really good. Because, like, uh, War Greymon, you can see his power over on the side. Uh, I'll move over so you can see it a little better. Um, that would make it 14. Uh, with a tie on the battlefield, or not a tie, with an Agumon under it and a Koromon un under it, it's 16,000 power, which is enough to get over that. And then on top of which, if I do have to go into Omnimon and Metal Greymon is in my evolution sources, but for some odd reason, I lost the Koromon or the Agumon, I at least have the plus 3,000 so I don't die. Like, I really enjoy it. Now, some people really hate his his other ability, his um, his uh, static ability. I like it. It's security attack plus two. So with the Greymon up under it, it's plus three. With Tai Chi's, you can even make it a plus five. Now, will you do that a lot? No, but it is pretty funny. However, when you do attack, you get minus five memory. So it's something that you have to use on a situation where you don't have a mega, you have a lot of memory, you don't have anything you can play kind of thing. It's very situational when you swing with him. But I can say I've won games because I was able to attack for three security. Uh, there was one game I attacked for four security and like there was no getting back from that. So, um, uh, Metal Greymon, I enjoy him. Like I said, there's other options. Like I said, War Greymon, War Growlmon is an option. The Metal Greymon from the starter deck, even the Metal Greymon from the 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 booster. Moving on, we have our War Greymon. Uh, when did you evolve? This is the one from the set, not the boot, not the starter deck. This is the booster War Greymon. Uh, when he did evolves, uh, that this Digimon gets Security Attack plus one. Um, so with, uh, with the Greymon, you attack for three security. The important part about War Greymon is not the security attack, however. It is nice to have, but it's not the most important. The most important thing is during your turn, this Digimon security checks make it to where the option card security effects cannot activate. And in a meta game where we have Terra Forces running around, Trump Swords, we have... Um, spark hammers and the purple decks we have heat vipers to go to hand we have um, uh, grizzly wings to go to hand like those will not trigger they just go straight to trash nothing else so like the war Greymon is very good at being able to keep the tempo on your side not your opponent so as long as you keep your tempo your opponent can't get their tempo back uh, moving on we have Phoenix Mon the reason I'm only running three is I have one more Mega that I do play. I do recommend if you're playing a level seven deck such as Omnimon, you play, like if you have four Omnimon, you want to have double that many level sixes. I've seen that. I was like, nah, that's not going to work. I'll just play six or No, you definitely do need to have enough because if you can't go into the Omnimon, your deck's not doing what it wants to do. So the Phoenix Mon, just generic evolution. Sorry, is this video is very, very long now. It's like a 45 minute long video at this point. Um, I had to walk away. Um, Phoenix Mon, just generic. If you go into it from like the rookie all the way up, I think it's only one, five memory, which is really good on the back end. At least you can get back to your Omnimon and counter your opponent's Omnimon. And I think that's one of the reasons why people are playing the generic versions. At least that's what I'm thinking, other than starving. Starving is important, but I don't think it's as important as people are putting it out to be. But this deck, especially with set 1.0, this is the optimized list that I can think of. Like, I don't see a way to... Um, to not play the deck with the vanilla Phoenix Mon. Um, now, this is my personal choice, right? The Volcanic Dramon's in here just because it can, it has an on play skill, destroy Rookie Rush. And with Rookie Rush, like, you're able to deal with all your opponent's Digimon, put them back because they're not drawing anything for their Digimon that they're playing. And then on top of which, like, I'm only playing a one of. I know some people are taking out the War Greymon to play in a four Volcanic Dramon, four Phoenix Mon. I, I'm still on the fence about this card. I have one of. I know Rookie Rush exists. I know when the second set comes out, Rookie Rush is going to fall off a little bit. 
And uh, I would be willing to say that after the fourth set comes out, that Rookie Rush is going to kind of slim down. It's not going to be as powerful. So at least the colors will have stuff to do with them. Uh, the next card we have is two Tai. Um, Tai is actually from the the booster, not the starter. Uh, makes our memory three if it's two or less at the start. And all of our red Digimon with four more evolution sources get security attack plus one. Now remember with this, the Omnimon is white, not red. This works really well with stuff like Volcanic Dramon if you have to evolve him, or War Greymon, but it does not work well with Omnimon because he's white. He is not red. Um, the other option to this is maybe playing, I don't know, uh, uh, maybe one more Volcanic Dramon and then playing another ultimate or two more ultimate so you can make sure that you get to your ultimate to your Mega because Omnimon does spin back a Mega to your hand um, or level 6 back to your hand. So, like, if you didn't want to play this, I would say play something along the lines of two more ultimates. Like I said, the other Metal Greymon is fine. Um, I think there is two of those. And then, I feel like there's a Tyranomon, but I'm very wrong on that. I know I am. But, um, yeah, two more ultimates would be fine in this place if you didn't want to play it. I play it for the three memory, and I don't see it a lot. And honestly, that's one reason I like like playing the Memory Starve, because I don't have a lot of these. So if my opponent starves me, I can starve them back. Um, finally, the namesake card of the deck. We have a 4 of Omnimon. Um, Omnimon's able to blow up multiple Digimon with the same name, which is very... Like, it comes... <sighs> It becomes more important the later the game goes. Like, if you don't start dealing with your opponent's stuff, then maybe they're playing, I don't know, Rust Tyranomon, and they get greedy and play another one. That's two of them down. Now, one thing I do want to say about Omnimon's deck. I see a lot of people um, do videos. When you're playing against Omnimon and you know you're playing against Omnimon, don't get greedy. Omnimon is built on somebody that tries to get greedy. So when you try to play all your mega level, your level sixes, or try to like just work on one Digimon, Omnimon ruins you for that. Like try to go wide, try to get as many different Digimon names on the battlefield as you can because Omnimon can't deal with them. Omnimon has the same amount of blockers as that by else, only four, unless you play black blockers. Um, so like keep that in mind. Also his return effect only stands him so you can swing again. So you get to activate and you go and you swing again. Um, and of course, like you get security attack plus one if you have the the gray mod up under it, which is really good. Um, don't get me wrong, but like that's all I got. Once he's there, he's there. Once he's done what he's done, he's done. So like, if you can make the Omnimon's advantages lessen. As you play, you actually gain an advantage against the Omnimon deck. And I wanted to go ahead and note it that because I just I just see a lot of people that's like, I'm going to, like, there was one video I watched where a Saris Mon is played and the guy, like, forces himself into another Saris Mon. It's like, Omnimon's going to destroy those. So, like, just keep that in mind. Don't try to play the same name Digimon. Don't rush up to your Mega and then rush up to your next Mega or level 6. You want to kind of like spread everything out, make it harder for your opponent to make that decision. Um, but anyways, final card of the deck is a 4 of Terra Force. If you're playing red and you don't play Terra Force, then you're bad. Just kind of like when you play Darkness and you never play Terra Pit in Duel Masters, which if you like... If you ever played Duel Masters and enjoyed the game, leave a like on this video, please. But without... Further to do, this is my War Gr or my Omnimon deck with War Greymon. Um, War Greymon is interchangeable. I do want to note that as well. I did not get to say that. Gallantmon or Dukemon, depending on which way you want to look at his name, is interchangeable with War Greymon. Um, if you find that you're having a lot of problems with purple, I would say, like, replace the Agumon with Giamon because his effect's always going to work against purple. And replace the Wolgreymon with Gallant slash Dukemon. Um, but yeah, 
Overall, I really do enjoy this deck. I hate to say that I enjoy this deck. Also, also, Yokomon exists for the people that wanted to know. Uh, this is the other starter that you can play. I decided to throw it to the side. I really do not like it after testing. Um, it just doesn't do enough for me, and it's only whenever you attack an opponent's Digimon. And you're not normally going to do that. So, But anyways, my guys... Oh gosh, I'm messing this all up at the ending. Anyways, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like, comment, and don't forget to subscribe. And I will t catch you all in the next video. Peace.